Hi guys, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at the affixing system in PSO2 NGS. Hi guys, and in today's video for PSO2 NGS, I'm going to take you through how the item lab works. So the item lab's used for several different features in the game, and it's mainly used for strengthening your gear. So think of it similar to previous games where you've used grinders to enhance your gear. In PSO2 NGS, there is a little bit more to it. It works a little bit more similar to how original PSO2 did, in that there's several different ways of strengthening your gear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through it all. So what I've got in my inventory here is we've got these Vershmelt boots, which have fixed determiner level 4 on them. So I'm going to try and build these into a weapon I would actually use. So the first thing we need to know about the item lab. There's one in every city, um, so th there's always an item lab, regardless of which region you're in. And when you open the menu, there's several different options here. Now, at the moment, um, one of the reasons I'm doing this video now is because at the moment in NGS, there's actually a campaign running um, that makes a lot of the item lab features a lot easier and a lot more cost effective to use. So the, the first one we've got is item enhancement. So this is what I would describe as grinding. This is where you, you, you basically just use grinders to and, and materials to enhance your weapon and just you're just making the base stats of the weapon stronger. So if we go into an item enhancement, first thing it'll ask you is to choose the um, the weapon that you want to enhance. So for us, it's these Vershmelt boots. Then what it'll do is it'll ask you to pick some materials. So these material items, um, these will all be lost when you grind. So make sure you don't use anything that you actually value. Now, generally, you want to be using these um, these gold Primsword 2s. Uh, lower level weapons uh, earlier in the game, you can get away with using silver prim swords and regular gold prim swords. But particularly for later in the game, um, the only real cost effective ones are these gold prim sword twos. But because we're grinding a, a nine star weapon with the version melt, we need to use these prim sword twos really to make any real difference. So what you can see is in the middle menu, if we add one of these gold prim swords as a material, you can see what it'll do is it'll show you how much experience this gives the weapon and it'll also show you how it'll affect the the level of the grind for the weapon so you can see our enhancement level will go from zero to 50. now it may go higher than that um, and that's where we need to start talking about limit breaking so what i'll do is we'll go into limit breaking and then we'll, we'll come back to item enhancement so limit breaking is essentially enhancing the, the maximum grind that the weapon can go to so generally, most weapons are capped at plus 50 initially. Um, with limit breaking, you can artificially increase that cap by 10 at a time. So if I go into limit break and choose these boots, you can see it, for the cost of eight arms refiners and four arms refiner twos, we can increase the limit of the weapon. It also costs us at the moment 95,000 Mazetta. Um, because there is a boost going on at the moment, it is costing half. So it would normally cost double this. So when we do this limit break, you can also use these things called support items. What these do is they might give you, um, for example, they could give you a reduced cost or they might substitute the materials. So if you are using materials that are quite valuable um, in terms of things like the arms refiners, you can use these items that will actually substitute for the arms refiners. So you'll just use one of these items instead of using these. Um, as it stands at the moment, I've got quite a few arms refiners anyway, so I'm not too worried about using them. So I'll just say don't use for now. If we then just confirm that. So what it says is Vershmelt's boot enhancement limit increased from 50 to 60. So if I just briefly go back to our item enhancement now and do the same thing again, you can see that would now take it to 60. There was obviously leftover experience that we weren't getting advantage of there. So it is generally worth limit breaking your weapon first just to make sure that you're getting the most out of the item enhancement. So again, we'll go back to limit break. And you can see now, again, for another eight arms refiners and another four arms refiner twos and 105,000 Mazetta, again, will be double normally. We can now increase that to 70. And then at the time of recording, the, the maximum grind at the moment is 80. Um, it, they do increase every now and again though, so it may increase after this video goes out. So, and again, this one costs a little bit more, so it's now 20 arms refiners and 10 arms refiner twos. 
and 105,000 Mazetta. Again, would be double that normally. And that now increases the enhancement limit to 80. So if I now look at the weapon, what you can see is in the display, on the enhancement level, it says enhancement level zero, but then in brackets here, it says max 80. So this would say max 50 normally. So now what we can do is we can go back into item enhancement. And if we again go to use one of these gold prim swords, you can see it will now go to 60. But what you can see is there's actually a little bit of experience left over in the bar. So what this will do is if we just use this prim sword too, it will take us to plus 60. And it'll give us a little bit of experience towards 61. Now, for reasons I'm not really sure why, once a weapon gets to plus 60, getting it to plus 70 and plus 80 is a lot more work and there's a lot more materials you need to use that the experience seems to exponentially increase now with item enhancements you can choose up to five material items at once so what we'll do is we'll add four more prim sword twos so you can see now with these four prim sword twos we're getting to 60 and almost to 61. now just to throw a bit of RNG into the mix, with the item enhancements, you can either get a success or a great success. You can't fail item enhancement, um, but it will either be a success or a great success. Now, at the moment, again, with this campaign, um, this is a, a really, really good campaign at the moment for grinding. So at the minute, we get great, great success rate plus 90%, and it's already a 10% chance normally. So it, it's essentially guaranteed great success at the moment. Normally, you'd be looking at about a 10% chance of a great success, which you can increase with some items. Now, what great success does is it gives you a lot more experience on that grind. So, for example, say if we got to 60 and almost 61 with a normal grind, we, we might get to in, into 61, maybe a little bit towards 62 if we've got a great success. So it just gives you more experience. So what we'll do is we'll confirm this. It does cost end grinders. This will depend on, I think generally it depends on the rarity of the weapon and where you're grinding. Uh, but generally it's about five grinders. We've got tons of them, so it doesn't matter. And there's a little bit of a Mazetta cost as well. Again, it's, it's not too expensive though for, for the actual grinding process. So I've got 26,000 Mazetta for us at the moment. So if we confirm that, it'll say, do you want to proceed? Um, you can also use items to improve the likelihood of a great success. This is where you could increase your success rate with a grind if you wanted to. So if I use this 20% item, our normal 10% great success rate would increase to 30. Now at the moment, because of this campaign, we've got great success plus 90%, so there's no point me at all using those. You can see the great success rate here is listed as 100. So there's, it's just a waste of items for me to use those at the moment. But outside of this campaign, you typically, particularly if you're doing past plus 60, um, it can be worth sometimes using these items to boost the chance of a great success just to try and reduce the amount of materials that you're using. So, we'll confirm that. You see, it says, with a smelt boot enhancement, greatly successful, enhancement level change from zero to 60. And then what it also says is, enhancement level 60 exceeded, augment slots increased from two to five. So augmenting is another way of increasing your weapon. And generally weapons will have two augment slots to start with. And once you get to certain grind thresholds you'll get another augment slot the maximum at the moment is six slots so we'll confirm that so you can see now on these boots they're now version mods boots plus 60 the attack's gone up by a lot and if we go into here now it says enhancement level 60 there's a bar filled up to show you how far we are towards 61 and it says max 80. so if we go to the third tab you can't really see it here at the moment, but if we go to here, you can see there is augment slots. And these are blank at the moment because this weapon has no augments. But you can see we've got five augment slots. Once we get this to plus, I believe it's to plus... I can't if it's 61 or if it's... I think it's, it might be 70 you have to get it to. We'll unlock another slot. So what we'll do is we'll enhance that again. Again, we're just using these gold prim swords. Confirm that. Ah, so there we go. So, so it's actually 61. Yeah, so 61, you get your sixth slot. 
So generally, you want to be, if you're trying to conserve money and you can't really afford to go all the way to 80, um, even if you just get to 61, that'll be enough to get your six augment slot, which is, that's crucial. So you, you definitely want to make sure you have the six augment slots. So that's a, a very brief look at the item enhancement part. So we've already covered limit breaks. The next thing is um, adding augments. So this is one of the more complicated parts of the item lab. The way the augment system works in NGS is if we've got this weapon, you can see we've got no augments, no augments at all on it at the minute. It's all blank here. Now, again, with this campaign, we have a plus 10% success rate on adding augments. Um, I'll go through exactly how that works in a minute. So first thing you do with augments is you select the weapon that you want to add augments to. So these Vershmelt boots. Next thing you do, so for augments, the way this works, you use um, capsules, which you'll get from various enemy drops. You can get them from exchange shops. There's tons of different ways to get different capsules. Um, and those capsules will have different abilities. And if you add those to your weapon, your weapon will give you those abilities. So what we'll do is, you, when you get to this stage, it'll ask you to choose the material items, which are the capsules. And for me, I've got them all in my material storage, so they're all here. So you can see, just as an example, so this Stamina 1 capsule, you can see on the right hand side here, it would give us the ability Stamina 1, which would give us 5 HP. Or if we go to, for example, a slightly more complicated one, so uh, Diff Precision, for example, this would give us Range Weapon Potency plus 2%. And potency floor increase plus two percent. Now, some of the lingo that they use for the augments can be a bit confusing sometimes. So, generally, your potency—the easiest way of thinking of that—is just your damage. Um, generally, your potency is just how much damage you'll be inflicting. Potency floor increase. What this does is, if you if you go to a weapon and look at the base stats of it, what you'll see generally is that you've got this um, damage adjustment. So with the Vershmelt boot, you can see the damage adjustment is between 50 and 100. So if we raise the potency floor, it will raise the minimum damage that we do. So for weapons with quite a wide variance on damage, raising the potency floor can be quite a good, a good thing to do. Just so you've got a slightly higher minimum damage. So if we go back into the augment menu, go back to our boots and back to our material storage. So what we want to do is we want to add abilities that will benefit um, this character that are you know beneficial to the weapon. So with these being jet boots, obviously they are a technique weapon. So generally you want to keep that in mind when you're adding augments. So for melee weapons, you want to be making sure that you're adding affixes that benefit melee. For range weapons, you want to be adding affixes that benefit range and so on. So we go through some of these. So for example, if we add this high ret dominant LC. This would give us 30 health, 2.75% potency, and a 2.25% potency floor increase, which isn't bad really. It's a pretty good effect. Um, there is another version of it as well called High Ale Domina. Now this gives you only 10 health instead of 30, but it does give you 4 PP as well. So it's up to you which one you want to go with. Um, there are some better fixes in general, but either of these are pretty solid. So just for the purposes of this video, We'll go with high rate domina. Now, if we go to add one of those capsules, what it does is it shows you the ability that you're adding and the success rate of adding that ability. Now you can see it is very low. So at the moment we have a 10% increase uh, success rate on augments. So normally this would only be 10%. So what will happen is if you succeed in augment, that augment will get added to your weapon. If you fail an augment, the, the capsules will just be wasted. You won't lose the weapon or anything like that. Um, you'll just waste the capsules and waste the um, the money that you've used. Now, the way the game helps you get around that is you can add more than one capsule. And you can add up to 10. And each capsule that you add will increase the success rate. So again, if we go to this and we add a second one, it adds another 10%. If we add another one, it adds another 10%. And you can see this rate increase in here. So 40. We add another one, 50. Another one, 60. Now, the max you can go to is 10, normally. The reason it's not letting me go to 10 at the moment is because we have this 10% increased success rate. So it's already at 100%. Um, normally, with 9, you would have a 90% success rate. On this affix in particular. Um, generally, with 10 affixes, you're going to have a very high success rate. 
However, I will say that not all affixes will cap at 100%. There are some affixes, particularly the, the better ones, that even with 10 caps, they might cap at, say, 70%. Um, with these LC capsules, which are the ones you get from La Seal and a couple of other places, these have um, these these are pretty much 100% if you use 10 capsules. And again, because we've got this event on at the moment, we only need to use 9 because we've already got the, the plus 10% boost. So next up, we'll go to see what else we've got. So we've got Halfenil LC. So this gives us again more health, more PP, and a pretty big boost to potency. This is a really, really solid capsule. There is a better version of Halfenil out now called Lux Halfenil, but Halfenil LC is still a really solid pick if you can't get Lux Halfenil capsules. So again, we'll add some of these. You can see, there is a small monetary cost as well, but it's, it's really, really low. Next up. We've got um, Gladiosol. So Gladiosol, again, decent chunk of HP and PP and a pretty big potency boost. So again, we'll add that. The so next up. Yeah, so um, so because we're using a bouncer, um, we use obviously a mix of melee and tech weapons. And obviously with Jet Boots, you kind of do a mixture of the two. So... Um, Meltech Duelable is actually not a bad little affix, so it just gives us a nice 2.75% uh, melee and tech weapon potency boost. So we'll add that. Next up, what else can we add? So we could add this uh, Grand Dreadkeeper LC. So this gives us 15 health, 3 PP, 2.25% potency, 5% potency floor increase, and 1% damage resistance. It's not really that bad, really. It's essentially a different version of Dreadkeeper, so Dreadkeeper normally gives you a lot more health than this but it doesn't give you the potency increase, so I personally find Grand Dreadkeeper a little bit more useful. But we'll go with that. So that gives us what? That gives us five affixes. So we need one more. And we can go with um, Gigas Mast LC, which gives us 20 health and 3.25% potency as well. So if I now go down to confirm, what you can see is we've got this screen here. So on this screen here, what you've got is you have all the different affixes that you've picked. And you can see they're all categorized in different categories. The reason for this is because some affixes overlap with each other. and you, um, you can only pick one from each category. So as an example, you couldn't add... Say you tried adding Technique 4 to a weapon. You can't also add Death Technique to the weapon as well. Um, because they're both overlapping affixes. Similarly, um, for any souls from any of the bosses. So you, for example, you couldn't add Renis Soul and Am Soul at the same time. You have to pick one or the other. So on this screen, just make sure there isn't more than one affix listed in each category. So we've got category one, category two, category three, category four, category five, category six. So we're fine. But if, say if, just as an example, say if, if these two affixes here were both in category five, then we'd have to go back and choose a different affix because we can't add both of them. So what you do then is you just select each of the affixes and you can see it'll add it in here, in each of the slots, and it'll show you the success rate again. So what you can see is they're all 100% apart from Meltech Dualable 4. So that even with this boost is 90%. So there is a small chance that'll fail. So we now go to start a fix augment. Now on here you've got success boosters and item preservers. So what these do is, so the success boosters, as the name suggests, boost the success rate of the actual affix. So for us, you can see that we're all at 100% but Meltech Dualable is a 90% chance of success. And I, I don't really want to deal with that, with that failing. Um, it wouldn't be the end of the world if it did, but I've got 215 of these 10% increased success rate cap, um, items, so I may as well use one of them. So if I use that, it'll now increase that to 100. Item preservers are another type of item. I don't have any with me at the moment, but what they do is they preserve the capsules that you use in case of failure. So if you're using capsules that are worth a lot, for example, like Lux Health and Ale, you might want to use item preservers with it just to make sure you don't lose the capsules. Um, so when we confirm this, again, there's a small monetary cost. You can see, it'll show you the results. So you'll see all the successful ones in green and all of the red, uh, failed ones in red. Obviously, if any fail, all you need to do is just try reaffixing again. It doesn't do anything to the weapon. It just means that you need to try affixing that affix again. But we've got all the successful ones there. So if we close that now, you can see that we've now got these affixes listed on the Vershmelt's boots. That's how the augmenting works. 
Next up, we've got unlocking potential. So potentials are hidden abilities that are attached to the weapons that um, give you various different buffs. Um, they can do all sorts of different things. So with the Vershmold's boots, what they do is they have um, a potency called Everbright Unit. And what this does is it actually reduces your maximum your potency by 25% um, initially, which is quite a big drop in damage. However, the flip side of that is it gives you plus 100% critical hit rate. So you always crit. So it's, although you're doing ma low maximum damage, you're also always critting and crits do more damage than normal. So it works out quite well in the end. So what you can see is we've got the, the potential here and it shows you the materials you need for this as well. So generally you'll need photon chunks and then other types of minerals as well. I'm actually getting really low on photon chunks actually, so um, I, may, I probably won't be able to do all of this, but I'll just give you an idea of how it works. So you can see for this one, we need 45 photon chunks, 80 monotite and 80 dolomite. So it is quite intensive on your materials. So again, whenever randomite is um, added to the game, make sure that you exploit that and get as much materials out of it as you can. There is other ways of getting materials really easily as well. Um, which I will go into in a second. So, again, there's a monetary cost. Now, unfortunately, for some reason, with this boost event, they haven't done any boosts for adding potentials. It would have been nice to see it, um, the money or the items reduced, but for some reason, they didn't touch that. So we pick the potential that we want. Again, there are items that you can use to um, replace the materials. Unfortunately, I don't have any of them at the moment. So if we confirm that, can't fail adding potentials either it always works and you can see now we've got everbright unit level one and if we go into the third tab of the weapon you can see all the different affixes that we've got here we've got this fixer ability which i'll go into in a minute and we've got everbright unit and if we expand it it shows you what that does now with um potencies you can actually level them up generally they'll go at the moment they'll go to about level six at the time of recording so every time you level up potency it'll improve how effective it is so what you can see is with if we go to level 2, the potency will only go down by 22% instead of 25. So it's less of a, a potency hit. And we still get the critical hit um, boost of 100%. But obviously it costs a lot more materials as well and a lot more money. But now we need 64 on chunks, 80 trinite and 80 tetracite. So it, it does get a lot more intensive on your materials. But again, these will just keep on going until you get up to level 6. I know for a fact that I don't have enough for on chunks at the moment. So what I'll do is I'll show you another weapon that does have a max potency on it. Okay, so here I've got a, a Vershmelt rod that has a max potency on it. And if, you can see it's still got the Everbright unit. But if I go to this and expand this, you can see that this only decreases your potency by 14%, which is not really a big deal. Um, so the higher you get the potencies, well, sorry, the higher you get the potentials, the the less the negative effects will affect you and generally the more positive effects you'll get. That's how adding potentials works. Next thing is preset skills. So preset skills are, if we look at this uh, version of boots again, you can see we've got this red ability here, which is fix a terminer. So these are abilities that when the, when the item drops, they're randomly assigned to the weapon. So generally you'll, you'll find that most weapons won't have them. Um, it's just now and again you'll get a fixer ability on a weapon. These are randomly determined and each fixer ability does a different thing. So this one, fixer terminal level 4, increases our critical potency by 14%, which is actually huge on Vershmelt weapons because obviously we're losing potency from the potential. We're getting the ability to always crit. So basically it means that every crit that we do, which is going to be every single hit because of the potency, um, is getting a 14% boost. So we're losing 14% potency from the um, potential. It's 25 on this, but it'd be 14 when it's maxed. Um, so we'd be losing 14% from the potential, but then we're gaining 14% back on our crits, which we're always going to crit. So it's just a, a huge upgrade for virtual weapons. But there are other terminus, there are other fixes as well. So for example, um, these are gently boots. These have fixed attack five. And these just give you a straight up potency boost. Um, there is other fixes as well. So once you've got a weapon with fixer, you can then enhance the, the fixer or transfer it. So you can transfer a fixer from one weapon to another. There are restrictions on it though. So for example, 
say I wanted to transfer the fixer from um, this Argenti boot, for example. Um, I believe I would want to be able to transfer that to another Argenti weapon. Okay, so in our inventory here, we've got this Neos Australian Gunblade that doesn't have a fixer ability on it. But you can see underneath it, we've got another Neos Australian Gunblade that does have fixer. So if we select this one without, it'll ensure us that we can then transfer the fixer from this one. So what we do then is we would pick this weapon. It asks you which ability you want to transfer. So we want to transfer fixer attack three. And again, there's a money, uh, there is um, a small material cost. Again, it's quite heavy on four on chunks, but um, you pick that and then you begin the skill transfer and it will transfer the, the weapon from one weapon to the other. So that's how that works. So the other thing you can do is you can actually enhance your um, resets as well. What this means is for these Vershmalt's boots, for example, they have fixer termina four. We can try enhancing that to fixer five if we want to. So what you do is you pick the weapon that you want to receive the increase. What you would need then is you would need um, a weapon with fixer termina five and you would basically use that and it would have a chance of upgrading the fixer. If it didn't work, I believe it destroys the weapon. Yeah, I believe it destroys the weapon that's got the fixer um, that you're trying to get. So if we were trying to increase fixer termina from four to five and it failed, the, the weapon that had fixer five would be destroyed. But if it worked, then fixer five would be transferred over to the, the original weapon. So that's how fixers work. Um, so again, just whenever you're, you're hunting or anything, just check the items that you get and just see if anything has any fixers. Sometimes a weapon that isn't very good might be worth keeping just because it's got a fixer that you can transfer. But next thing is multi-weapon. Multi-weapon is an ability where you can essentially combine the abilities of two weapons into one. The way it works is if you combine two weapons, it allows you to use the photon arts from both weapons on the same pallet slot. So an example of that that I've got here is... So just as an example, I've got this um, Tenebrous one that I've just made for this video. Um, and this has multi-weapon. You can see it's got a wand icon and a dual blades icon, or sorry, blades. So if I was to equip this, I could equip it with either wand or sorry, blade for an art. And it, what it allows you to do is make your palette a lot more versatile. So instead of using like six palette slots, you might be able to get away with using a lot less and then bring other weapons in. So it's quite a useful skill to have. Um, it also allows you to use the weapon actions from both weapons that you choose as well. So a quite often, quite common one is to use rifle as a as a multi weapon because the weapon action for that at the moment is pretty busted. Um, so that's one thing you can do with multi weapons. So that's definitely worth bearing in mind as well. But there is also just to quickly cover it, there is also an exchange shop in the item lab as well. So from this, you can get augment capsules. So you can see we've got a Lux Halfnail capsule here, and we can get one of these by. We can either use um, 10 Foundier Capsules and 5 Halfanel Capsules, or we can use 10 Foundier, 150 Aegis Soul Fours, and then 50 of each Domino Capsule. This would be to make one Lux Halfanel Capsule, so it is, it's very, very resource intensive. You see there's loads and loads of different ones you can make here. There is also another one for other enhancement materials, and this is a way of getting um, Photon Chunk 2A, 2Bs, Arms Refiners, some of the Ores. Some of them are very, very easy to get. So for Fort and Chunks, for example, um, you can't get them from here, but say if you're running low on Hexakite, for example, um, you can exchange 10 grinders for one Hexakite. Um, so that's one way of getting them. There is a limit to how much you can actually exchange. So, you know, typically for like the Arms Refiner 2s, you can exchange up to 20 a week. So that's one way of getting materials. Another way that a lot of people actually seem to forget is... Near the entrance to every city, there is an NPC called Ash. So, so she, she's the NPC for the creative space. But another function that she has, if you talk to her, is she actually has a little shop where you can exchange Genesis points. The Genesis points you get through creative space stuff, but you also get it through log, daily logins, um, things like that. And what you'll notice is in her shop, she has a ton of different uh, exchange items. So... There's no stock of these at the moment because I've bought them all out, but basically every week you can buy up to 200 of each of these and you can see they only cost, even for the photon chunks, it only costs like five Genesis points per photon chunk, which is nothing. 
Um, there's also things like Ajax armors and um, Aegis Integras that you can get from here as well. And there's a few capsules in there, but they're not particularly great ones. Um, you see, so Fort and Quarter, for example, if we buy 200 of those, it's only going to cost us a thousand Genesis points. So I would thoroughly recommend just every week when this refreshes, just do it just to replenish your supplies because you will find you'll go through them very quickly. So that's one way of getting them. Um, again, just make sure that you're exploiting randomite as well, just to make sure that you're getting the most out of that. Um, aside from that, um, there is a couple of hotspots on the map that are good for minerals as well. So one in particular that I use quite often is in Steer. At this region mag here, uh, Strawball Isle, if I go there now, there's a couple of locations on the map where there seems to be clusters of material of minerals together. I'm just covering minerals because these are the main ones that you use for affixing and you know for, for various item lab functions. We can see here we've got the region mag, and there is tons and tons of it's mainly dualamite and pentalite, but there's absolutely tons of it. There's also a lot of these um, Tem sea slugs, as, oh, sorry, uh, Steer sea slugs as well. So if you're getting low on any seafood items, you can come here and get tons of those as well. And again, there's absolutely loads of them. You just see there's just nodes everywhere. This is a really, really good place to, to gather. Unfortunately, it does only have Dualamite and Pentalite though. So if you need any others, you won't get them from here. Um, so that's one place. Another place that I think is really, really good is if you go to Caveris and go to the Mystery Woods North Ryuka. So when you come here, you, what you want to do is you want to run south. And you want to go to where this river is here. And this is a really good place to gather seafood as well. Um, but again, what you'll get is... Around here, there is a lot of minerals as well. So you can see there's a few over there. There's some around the banks of the river. This mainly seems to be... I think it's mainly monotite and uh, fort and chunks. There is also some shawl nodes over there, which you can use just to get money as well. But again, if we keep running down here... Some more fort and chunks... Oh, there is some tetracite here as well, actually. You can see again, there's quite a cluster of, of nodes around here as well, so it's probably worth checking out here as well. That, that's some of the better places to look for some minerals anywhere. Um, but for the meantime, I think I'll end this video there. Hopefully it's been relatively useful for anyone who's um, getting into NGS. Um, at the moment, while this event's on, it's a really, really good time to upgrade your gear. Um, just because of the reduced costs and um, a lot of the increased success rates on grinding. So it's definitely worth doing now because it will cost you a lot more in Mazetta and in materials once the event ends. Um, so definitely take advantage of it while you can. Sega do run these events a few times a year usually, so um, just, just keep an eye out for them. And the one at the moment though is particularly good, um, particularly for the great success rates. Definitely, definitely take advantage of it. Anyway, I hope it's been useful. I'll end this video there. If you found it useful or interesting, um, feel free to like or subscribe to the channel. Um, it really, really does help out. But for the meantime, I'll end this video there and I'll see you all in the next video.